podcast. We've got a pretty interesting episode here today. But first, Altman, how's your training been? Um, well, we put on wraps today. <laughs> oh, we did, we did. Oh, just to have fun with it. Um, I did my squat session, went really well. Actually, got two weeks to the meet. Two or three weeks. I think two weeks. I can't remember. Three yeah, something, weeks, something like weeks, that. Two weeks. Um, but yeah, and after I got done deadlifting too, I was like, I saw Seth do his 425 with an RP like six, RP six with with wraps on. I was like, uh, I want to try that. Um, oh, don't let people know how weak I am. <laughs> well, he did it for three. At like, he, and this is his first week in a suit in a while. Yeah. So he's got to get used to it and everything. So you got to give him a little bit of leeway. I'll be the um, first person to tell you that I use equipment because I'm weak raw. Uh, that is true. I don't. I don't deny that. <laughs> I second that. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I'll, so I'll, I got to wrap. I let Seth wrap me today for, like, a set of three on 365, and I just about died on the first rep. <laughs> I gave him the uh, the Titan Sig Golds, and I was like, I always ask people on, like, their first couple of rap sessions, like, you know, out of ten, what do you want? And all of was like, eight. Yeah. And he's like, uh, I think I'll get, like, one or two. And I was like, if you don't get three, I'm going to make fun of you on the podcast. <laughs> And I got three. So you got three. I, after the first one, I was like, oh, I don't know about me at three. I can, I've gotten uh, five before with 365. So I know I could have gotten something, but this was after squat session, after deadlift session. Right. I wasn't sure how the wraps were going to feel. But um, as kind of like as I squatted more, that I kind of got more used to the wraps and everything. But they were definitely different. Um, my calves are cramping up right now. I think that's because of that. Um, it was the first time you ever put them on, right? Yeah, first time ever. So. Well, I'd like to get them to them more. I didn't feel like I did any work. I feel like the raps did everything for me. Yeah. And I definitely see where people say how um, you can, it takes the pressure off your knees and everything. It makes you where you can probably lift longer because the, the raps are taking the bulk of the force. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I, I dig it. And um, it, I think it went pretty good. I yeah, can, I can see you getting back in them, you know, maybe trying out the titaniums, a little, yeah. little softer wraps. And just get into them. But you see why people don't spend a lot of time in them oh, or do not. like – more than triples most of the time. Yeah, like the the top part wasn't bad for me. It's just when I went down mm-hmm. that just like all that. I'm like, just get me the hell out of these things. Yeah. So that was yeah, that was definitely the worst part. If me. if you enjoy sets of five on squat with reps, you need to be admitted to a mental hospital. <laughs> yeah, something wrong with you. <laughs> but yeah, what are we uh, what are we talking about today? Oh, we're going to talk about since we're talking about squatting. And yeah. We're going, talk, we're going to talk about fixing the squat and how and some mistakes that people might make beginner and intermediate. Um, and just see how you can fix those on my weak points and pick, and fixing those and what are some exercises you can use for those weak points. Yeah. So let's um let's see. When when I see someone that's new to lifting and they they first start squatting, the first thing that I notice is I don't know, it's either either the knee cave mm-hmm. and then like the official term like knee valgus for that. Yeah. Um the knee cave or the hips rising. And I still have a problem with my hips rising. You know, I'm, I've still been working on that. But I find that with the knee cave, um, you know, I've always seen and heard that from the squat, start from the feet up. Yeah, so, I agree. Um, you know, if their knees are caving, it might be due to their foot position mm-hmm. or, you know, how, you know, it can be the width between their feet as well as the the angle of their toes. Mm-hmm. And that's really just something that you're going to have to play around with. Yeah. And, right like, there. experience different things. And, yeah. like, don't make drastic changes. Mm-hmm. Like, if your feet are 18 inches apart, don't go to less than shoulder width. Mm-hmm. You know, just just go, like, a couple, an inch at a time, really, on, on one or the other. And, and this kind of goes with, like, anything you're changing, any movement. Don't change a lot of things at once mm-hmm. because it's like, it's like an experiment. You don't know which... Um, which independent variable? I think I said that right. Independent or dependent, whatever. Go, <laughs> <Well>, Mr. Engineer. <laughs> <laughs> you don't. You won't know if you change a bunch of things. You won't know which one is benefiting the yep. lift. So, um, just try to change one thing at once by just a little bit, and you know, hopefully, if if it's not the foot position causing the knee valgus, it's probably a weakness somewhere. Yeah, I would. I would agree. And. Where where do you often see the people's weaknesses is when they have that? Um, I think what's his name? Is he, what, he's with the elite Nate. Oh, I can't remember his last name, but he says if it, if it walks on two legs, it's probably has weak hips. <laughs> which majority of people, more, especially us guys, probably have weak hips. Yeah. We don't really spend time on that good girl bad girl machine like Caleb called it. Um, we don't. You see most girls on that, but we don't really spend that much time on yeah. it. But if if you don't know what we're talking about, the machines that you always see girls on, we were your um. 
it's basically the abduction and adduction machines yeah. where you move your knees in and out. And, yeah, I've been doing those. Yeah. Because I have weak hips. Yeah, and it's definitely been paying off your squats down a lot better. Um, but you're talking about foot, foot positioning, foot stability. I think that's where it has to start. Um, there was a guy that I was listening to today. He said uh, he starts when he coaches like a, a snatch or power clean. He starts from the top. I was like, but your power comes from the floor. Like your that's where everything starts. Literally everything it starts on the floor. So I think that you should start from the floor. Make sure that foot's stable. Uh, make sure you're grabbing into the floor. Maybe like a claw eagle, or you're pressing that big toe into the ground. Something like that. There, there was been some literature I've seen is like um, you want to be on the back of your heels. Which um, if if you're squatting right, you're it's going to be over the basically your entire foot because that's what your foot's made for. It's made to hold weight. Yeah. Um, so you want that to be there, and um, Hip, yeah, adduction, adduction, or well, abduction, adduction of the hips, for sure. And one thing I've been doing is um, hip air blends. Hmm. Yeah, you, you and Dylan talking about those tonight. Those are those are great. Um, They're awful, but yep. but they work. Oh, dude, I, I heard my stability has gotten ten times better. Oh, and feet positioning. So one thing for me, I used to have my feet uh, a little bit wide, uh, wider than shoulder width. So wider, yeah, wider than shoulder width. Um, I, a pretty good bit wider than shoulder width, and my knees would cave in. Mm. So and I, I think I heard Squat University talking about this. Uh, I can't remember his name. Um, but he said if you're, if that's happening, then you could maybe try moving your feet in. And I did that, and it kind of just went away. My stability has gotten a lot better. I think one from the hip airplanes, moving my feet in. Um, I'm, I'm in heels now. I uh, got that from wearing my boots a lot, and that just feels a lot better. Squatted four or five today, which – never felt better in my life so I, it was like an rpe six and a half so maybe so about no, not six and a half yeah six and a half maybe so about maybe four reps left in the tank there so i'm excited to see what happens there but that for knee valgus and uh everything like that it, moving my feet in did help a substantial amount yeah and i think one thing you mentioned you're in heels now mm-hmm. and that that's a big thing you know if you if you want to squat well and healthy and any decent kind of weight no matter what that number is for you you need to have good squat shoes. Yeah, good. And you don't have to go out and buy some, you know, Romalio 4s right yeah. off the bat. But, you know, like we said on here before, tennis shoes with the squishy mm-hmm. sole are probably the worst thing. Yes. Because, like, would you would you rather I give you a BOSU ball to squat on or a 4x8? Four 4x8 by eight. Four by eight for sure. Yeah, Piece yeah. of wood, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. It you know it, the the harder surface of a squat shoe or a boot or a converse mm-hmm. something with a solid sole, mm-hmm. it's going to be able to distribute that pressure better yes. and more evenly mm-hmm. than that squishy old sole of a tennis shoe. Mm-hmm. And you know if 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 you want to try something besides a tennis shoe and you don't you know have the money or the time to to get some squat shoes, you know try squatting barefoot. Yeah, I think that's where everybody should start. Honestly, start with like a flat sole shoe and then move your way up. If that doesn't feel weird, that's not right where you're getting it at. That kind of happened with me. Mm-hmm. Um, my first three meets were just me and just my converse. And I was like, there's something that I can be doing better. It just doesn't feel right, right at the bottom. So I was like, okay, let me try it with my boots on because that has a heel. And I was like, wow, yes, I <laughs> found the secret. And then I just got heels. Cause I was, yeah. Um, Matt Winning says you don't need heels, but I beg to differ. I think it just depends on how your mechanics are. People yeah. With longer, longer limbs probably going to need that heel because it's going to shorten that range of motion for you. It's going to make it seem like you have a shorter a shorter femur. Yeah, and then sometimes when getting a heel of some sort, whether it's a boot or you know, a squat shoe, a raised heel, um, sometimes getting one of those can help the butt wink. Um, Absolutely. And that, yes. that's another problem. I don't want to get too far off what we're on right now. <laughs> but it, you know, it raises the heel, so it allows better... Ankle mobility. Ankle mobility, right. You can basically get to depth without having that butt kind of dip under you yes. when you get to the bottom. And one thing you mentioned, hip airplanes. Um, I've been doing those the whole block. And me and Dylan and Zach were having a discussion the other night. Um, and right now he's got me doing 3 by 12 And if you've done hip airplanes, you know they suck. Mm-hmm. And my balance has gotten better for sure and my hip hinge movement. Um, but I mentioned like, I mentioned to him that I thought for me that the single leg RDLs were better of a movement than the hip airplanes mm-hmm. because you know I feel like I felt it more I guess mm-hmm. 
And that kind of, and this kind of brought up another thing that I hadn't really thought about. Doing three by twelve on hip airplanes, it feels like a chore. Like yeah. I know what it's for. I know that it's going to benefit me and my bend or my squat, my deadlift. But just doing that many, I get kind of burnt out on them. So yeah, get bored. yeah, I get bored and I just kind of rush through them. So he's like, okay, um, that's what I need to hear. Mm-hmm. Like maybe we should try like a three by eight or a three by six. And you know, I think dropping those reps down makes it less of a chore, less reps, mm-hmm. less strain. So I can really focus on the movement itself. And like get get out of it what I should be. Mm-hmm. Um, I usually put those in the warm up for me. I don't count like three sets of twelve or anything. I just do it until I feel like I'm ready. I mainly use it like a glute activation and work on that stability. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I don't really have a set prep scheme for that one. Well, those are usually put in at the end of my workout. Okay. But yeah, hip airplanes. Um, look them up. They're a great exercise for. Hip mobility, mm-hmm. hip the hip, the hip hinge movement, and then overall balance. Yeah, you know, uh, f- feeling that weight spread over your foot. Yes, Jordan Shallow, Doctor Jordan Shallow, the uh, the muscle doctor, he's got a lot of good stuff on Go look him up on Instagram. He's got a ton of great information. He's a big hip airplane guy. Um, and so yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that uh, that second problem we mentioned, um, aside from the uh, the knee valgus, the butt wink, that uh, I had a problem with that last year, the year before. Um, have you ever had a problem with that? Oh, for sure. Like, I think every every lifter has it. I think it can come down to, like, a mobility issue mm-hmm. and bracing issue. Yeah. It's like um, Chris Duffin thinks it's a mo- – some of his older videos, he talks about mobi- it's a mobility thing, which I think if a beginner gets, it definitely is a mobility thing because you have to learn to kind of move your torso. Like, the way I explain it to people is you kind of want your torso to just fall in between your legs. You don't. Yeah. Really, you don't really want your torso to be. <sighs> as as the great Ed Cohn once said, open, open your taint. taint. Exactly. You kind of let every, let everything fall. Look at uh, Kevin Oak. Is that what his name? The big old black guy that's just ridiculously strong. Yes. It's been like him, Yuri, and um, someone else. Yeah, they, they their torso stay like that. It's the exact same position the whole time. Um, him, Yuri, and what's the guy's name? Dan Green. Just, yeah, 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 like yeah. their torso stay the same. It's just their legs. They like literally like open up their tank. They open up their that area. Yeah, and yeah. They just go down, and you're like, and it's basically like just make make it just a leg exercise. It's like a giant leg press. Yeah, a basically leg press. But I think that helps a lot, and of course bracing. Um, one like your bracing has gotten a lot better, which is definitely shown in your squat technique, especially with your form and your the way you, you squat now, where you're like nothing really moves for you that much anymore. And yeah. there are some guys that I've talked to recently that are saying that they're backers. I'm like, and they're 20 years old, and they say they have, and they've been to the doctor. Said the doctor said they probably should never squat again because they have a bulge, like a little bit of a bulging disc. But let's be honest, majority of people in the in this world have a bulging disc. We we probably have a little bit of something going mm-hmm. on, but it comes down to are you using the muscle around your spine? Your spine's not made to lift the load. Your spine's just there for your muscles to attach to. Your spine's not lifting it. Your muscles are lifting it. Every, every doctor work two cents is going to tell you you shouldn't be squatting, deadlifting, yeah. benching these crazy weights. Yeah. Like, that's, 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 kinda, that's that's health for you. That's, that's, that's kind of their job to tell you, hey, that's not that's not healthy. You yeah. Know? That's that's dangerous. Yeah. But if you find the right doctor um, and he understands what your goals are mm-hmm. and that – He's lifted. That it, 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 if he lifted, that's even better. Um, and he knows that you're not going to give this up. Like, I've had plenty of doctors and my chiropractor tell me, like, you know, this is not healthy. You shouldn't be doing this. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, all right, well, that's not an option. I'm not going to quit. Mm-hmm. So how can I get better? Yep. And like, Dr. Stuart McGill, um, I don't know if you know him. He, he worked with the powerlifter who broke his back completely, and he was a world he was a world record powerlifter. But he came back, like, a year later and broke more world records. And it all came down to the stability of his, like, of his spine, so his lumbar. So making sure his core was engaged and everything was working right every the stability he which and there's something called the mcgill big three mm-hmm. and it's uh, a curl up which is just you have your uh hands beneath your low back and you're laying on the ground you have one leg uh what would you call this it's like you have one leg pulled in not pulled in but the foot's on the ground mm-hmm. and you have one leg straight out and you kind you breathe in trying to push your low back against the floor and you try to pull you pull up your uh you try to pull your head up with your abs. Think about that. So it's just, it's like a, just working on actually 
learning to brace and use yeah. your abdominals. And in the bird dog, I know everyone probably knows what a bird dog is, where you're just on all fours, and opposite legs, opposite, uh, right, say the right hand comes up, the left leg comes up. You try to stabilize, keeping everything stacked. Excuse me. And then the last one, oh, what's the last one? Man, I forgot it. I can't remember. I just had it in my head. But look up McGill Big Three. You'll you'll know what I'm talking. You'll see what I'm talking about there. But those are great exercises to use to build up that brace so that you don't have that butt wing. Yeah, and um, Dylan had me doing something a little bit of like rehabilitation work. I kind of tweaked some stuff over the Christmas break, um, and it was a really good exercise. Um, but it was kind of like a Superman, mm-hmm. like a core exercise. Oh yeah. But you know, you lay on your stomach, put your hands behind your head. And you bring your your feet up, spread your knees just a little bit, and touch your heels together. Okay. And you you and you kind of raise your thighs off the ground. Mm-hmm. And for one, it gets glute and hamstring activation, mm-hmm. and it kind of teaches that external rotation because you're pressing your heels together. Okay. And that's what I need to work on a lot for deadlift. Mm-hmm. So I think that was a pretty good exercise. Yeah, it definitely worked for you. Yeah. So. We've been over knee valgus, um, hip, yep, butt wink. So what's the next part of the? So as you can see, we're going up the body. We're not yeah. just going down, jump, jump around. So the next part, I'll say the upper back, uh, the torso in general. Yeah, the torso in general, and like we we all work on need to work on this. We all need a bigger, thicker upper back so we can handle that that four twenty five for RP six like Seth over here, or a five hundred pound squat or a five hundred pound deadlift or something like that. You need a solid upper back. That can be done by band pull-aparts, chest supported rows, which is one of my big favorites, um, rows, pull-ups, just something to get that thickness in the rhomboids and everything. Because that, that in the end, that being able, that those are those basically top erectors, because erectors go up your entire spine, mm-hmm. and there's if you see it when they curl their back back foot, it's usually one the bar positioning it probably isn't that great, or two they're just weak up there. Yeah. So one of the, yeah, like, like we're talking about torso right now, mm-hmm. one of the common things I see is people over, overarching mm-hmm. their, their chest and you know, that's, it's like that might work position. for a little bit when the weights aren't very heavy, but when you start getting stronger, yeah. that's going to cause some problems. Yeah. It's know? not a strong position because right. you're not engaging your anything. You're, you're stretching your abdominals. Yeah. So, and your abdominals are only strong when they're flexed. So you can't flex your abdominals when you're doing that. Right. I think people people try to think about, you know, I need to get my chest up. And that's yeah. that can be a good cue when it's used in the right time. But you know, if if you're overarching your back, that you know, that's that's inefficient for one mm-hmm. and it can cause injury pretty easily mm-hmm. over time and, you know, quick qu- quickly if it if it yeah. does. But, you know, if one thing you need to think about is try to try to stack your torso. Mm-hmm. So, and what that means is you don't want to be bent over, but work on that bracing. Get a big breath in the diaphragm right below the bottom of the ribs and kind of do like a little crunch where where okay. you feel that your spine is in one straight line. Mm-hmm. And um, you'll feel it too. You'll feel, yeah. You, you will feel it in a stronger position as well. And sometimes maybe you can even think about the word stacked. You know, try to have, try to have like just a very compressed, tight torso in one straight line. Yeah. And if you do that, you'll find that it, it's going to increase everything because your back will be in a better position. Your um, your overall technique for the movement will be in a better position. You'll be more behind your your more in line with your heels, so you can actually move it more efficiently. And it creates less range of motion because, mm-hmm. like, when you go down, if you if you are in that arch, it's like you're talking about with that chest, trying to get your chest as far up. When you come down, your lower back's going to bend a little, and you're going to lose a little, little bit of that tightness. So it's going to make it a lot harder out of the hole. That's one thing I found. Right. That I would just go down to the bottom and I would just suck. Mm-hmm. I would come back up like, wow, I just lost everything. <laughs> it's, um, but now, I've, ever since I got my bracing a lot better, it just I feel even stronger at the bottom than I do kind of sometimes at the top. Yeah, and that, that bracing, like we, we talk about it a lot. It's, it's hard to get right. You know, it takes a long time to develop a right brace, and that's something that myself, I've – always been working on you'll probably never get your perfect brace yeah um you, know, you can you can strengthen your core all you want but it's it's that i wouldn't say movement but it's you know going through the steps to create a strong brace 
you know, that, yes. that 360 pressure. Mm-hmm. So one thing I did when I was working on it is I would lay on the floor and so, so one thing, it, it kind of bothers me when powerlifters are all about doing like crunches. <laughs> like you're, you're never going to flex your spine like that. Exactly. Like it doesn't build strength either. And over the course of the squat bench or deadlift, you don't need to, you need to activate and hold your core. It, it's yeah. not, it's not a constant like repetition. Yeah. So like, like static, um, oh, what's the word? Like a static work for your core. Isometric. Yeah, yeah, I, that, that's oh, yeah. that's the word, the big word, man, over here. <laughs> <laughs> but I would lay on my back. I would set like a kettlebell over my upper abs, so right below the bottom of my ribs, and I would get a big breath, tighten up, and do like fifteen seconds of flutter kicks. Hmm. You know. Um, so you're moving, you're holding, doing that isometric hold. And that's another thing with powerlifting, to be more specific. You know, the average duration of a lift is probably no more than 20 seconds. And that's kind of pushing it of what you're going to hold a brace for. Mm-hmm. So, you know, work on bracing for that period of time. Oh, for sure. Um, now, have you ever heard of 90 90 breathing? Uh, where you do breathe, or you like, you breathe in for a certain period of time, hold it for a period of time. Breathe out. That? Yeah, yeah, kind like of like square that. breathing. Yeah, you can call it that too. Okay. Like your feet are on the wall, like you're going to get into your squat position. Like you're, you like kind of at the bottom of your squat position. You lay on the ground, like you were just talking about, and you just try to pick your head up. Not you're not trying to curl or anything. You're mm-hmm. just trying to flex your abdominals, breathe in, stay flexed the whole time, and while you're breathing out, flex as well. Yeah, and it just gets you to activate because you can feel your low back against the ground. So you're trying to push that low back against yeah. the ground, get that kind of 360 yeah and if and if it's if it doesn't make sense what we're saying which i'm sure it probably won't to a lot of people it's hard to envision something without seeing it you know just hearing it you know look it up on youtube youtube is an endless free resource yes there's so much on there to learn um you know i should probably be watching more youtube videos on how to lift better (laughs) that's what my school is dude (laughs) (laughs) that's what altman's paying a ton of money a year to learn (laughs) YouTube, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like you know, once you once you get to that point where you can really feel your diaphragm diaphragm um, contracting and, and getting that good brace, and you know we we're putting a lot of stress on the diaphragm, but it's it's a three hundred and sixty thing. Like, yeah, your diaphragm's all, a muscle too. It's right, like it's made to expand and contract yeah. and hold. Not only using the front part, using your obliques, mm-hmm. using your lower spinal erectors, you know, and if you wear a belt which if you're lifting heavy you probably should yeah um cr- like people say create that 360 pressure you know all yeah. around try to try, try to, to break the belt exactly and he, uh, you can if you're doing it right you will hear your belt start to, if it's a leather belt start to crinkle up and like stretch yeah and if, if someone puts their hand in between your, you your torso and your belt they shouldn't be able to take their hand out they should be pulling you to try to take that hand out yeah and after so long, once you once you finally get the hang of of bracing your core correctly, like I can, I, I can't breathe into my lungs without my diaphragm also doing something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it's you know it's just doing doing so many reps over and over and creating a habit of it. Yes, um, one thing, one ex. I'm gonna say an exercise for like just bracing in general. Farmer carries and uh, like suitcase carries. Yes, Every, whenever. I, Ever since I did, I've, I did a farm carry with 400 plus pounds, however much the travel I weighs. Um, and I, I walked like, it was probably like 20, 30 feet. I did that twice. And when I got under the squat bar, I was like, four, 400 feels like nothing because I just walked <laughs> 20, 30 feet with it. So it's great. And it's a great way just to build stability. And your abdominals working that entire time to stabilize you to keep on from going all over the place. Yeah, doing, doing carries of any kind are, are super. Super beneficial, not only for the core bracing, but also to imagine that neutral spine and have everything yep. stacked in a line. Yep. Um, because, and like I've been with my little grip circuit, and do I walk back and forth? I've been trying to keep my spine neutral, keep everything stacked, and not not sway back and forth. Mm-hmm. You know, try to try to stay in one line. Yeah. And that's just moving under load. That'll that'll help you squat, especially. Exactly, and. Like the suitcase carries, as we're going to work your obliques a lot more, which are just a very essential muscle for the squat bench. You see these pallets, they have pretty thick waists. That mm-hmm. comes from your obliques being just muscle. Yeah. 
It's not. It's not all the time just being fat. Just yeah. So try to try to analyze what what's kind of going wrong um, with your torso, especially you know bracing. You can always work on your brace. Always. Yeah. That'll that'll always benefit you more. Um, and then maybe kind of other things like go ahead. Like belt positioning. That's another big thing. Like you see, some people have the up the belt up close to their diaphragm, so which is going to be like right right under the ribs. You have some people that have it down right below. It just depends on where you, I think you just get the best support. Mm-hmm. I think it depends on the lift too. Like deadlift, I like it up a little bit higher. Squat, I like it kind of in the middle. Yeah. So you you're kind of it changes a little bit. Yeah, because if I do it below for the deadlift, I can't get into the deadlift position. Yeah. And um, I f- and I just feel stronger when I put it right there for the deadlift instead of the squat. Yeah. It's weird, like, my belt, like, I have a decent-sized torso, mm-hmm. but it, like, barely fits in between my hip bone and the the bottom of my ribs, my rib cage. So you get a little bit of bruising there sometimes? Mm-hmm. Yeah, sometimes if I don't place it just right, mm-hmm. like, sometimes it'll kind of come up on my ribs in the squat, yeah. but, you know, I, I don't worry about it too much. Mm-hmm. Um, I like my belt a little bit higher. I try to, and sometimes, like, I told one of our guys this this, this afternoon, um, cause it was kind of, he had a problem with placing it. Mm-hmm. Um, I try to pull mine up a little bit in the back and have it come down like slanting in, in the front. Interesting. So like, you know, I have a little bit of a belly. Mm-hmm. I can kind of yeah. brace and push against that with my belly. Yeah. But just naturally, um, I feel, I feel more bracing in like the top part of the abs. And so like, you know, you can see, you know, from the side I have like, my top abs, they the only ones I really have. <laughs> yeah. So I like my belt a little bit higher. Okay. And I kind of, I'm kind of the opposite with deadlift. I have my belt, my top, the, when I'm in the, the front of the belt, it's a little bit higher, the back of it's a little bit lower. Really? Yeah. That's like, I, don't think, I just don't think it can fit around my record back there. Ah. I'm not saying that big a record, but it just literally can't fit Oh, yeah. Either. Almond's got a huge back, everybody. <laughs> he does his pull-ups. Hell yeah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> his, his what, 100 three times a week? Uh, not anymore. I'm trying to recover from the squat workout. <laughs> yeah, so, you got to be reasonable. Yeah, but after this meet, I'm going to be back on my, like, crushing back. <laughs> I, I, I'm 100% believe that the back is, like, I, I really want to big bench press. I want to bench four or five by the end of this year. Mm-hmm. And I 100% believe that if I get my back bigger, that it's going gonna, it's gonna to happen. Because I can't even, like, okay, after this bench thing, we'll go back to squat and everything. But, I can't even get the bar to touch my, like, just the bar itself to touch my chest when there's, there's no weight on there. Because mm-hmm. that's how tight I am at the bottom. Mm. Maybe if you put on, like, 30 pounds, you get a bigger belly, you would have to go as low. <laughs> that's true. That's true. <laughs> that's true. But bigger back has definitely helped out. A yeah. Lot. And I'll hear a lot of people say, well, we're still on the topic of a big back, um, like, they high bar hurts their neck. And Why for one, that's probably because you're not put in the right place. And I'm like, have you tried low bar? And they're like, I can't. And I was like, oh, well, you probably don't have a shelf. You know, yeah, you, you, you don't work on back. You see these guys are like, they're they're jacked up front. But behind, you look behind, they're like, wow. Yeah. You've got something missing there. And it, and if you if you work back for long enough and you, you get those, you know, some juicy back muscles up there in the top back there, you will have a shelf. Yeah, you like, just look badass too. Like you can, like when you get up under the bar, you put it. As low, or you kind of slide into it, and you should feel that bar hit hit that little shelf. Yep. Above what is it? Above the um. It's like the, right on the rear delts. Yeah, like right on the rear delts. Your rear delts are that shelf. Yeah, and sometimes like I feel it, you know, on the when it gets heavy, I feel it press into like the back of my shoulder. Yeah. Um, but maybe that just means I need a bigger back. Probably does. <laughs> you gotta come do some pull-ups with me, dude. <laughs> I don't. I don't like pull-ups though. <laughs> Well, I guess you're gonna have a small pack. Hmm. Okay. That's where we're going. <laughs> um, but yeah, getting back to the squat and stuff. Um, so let's talk about like fixing weaknesses in the squat. So let's say you you suck at the bottom of the squat. Let's go from the bottom to the mm-hmm. top again. What are some exercises you can do to? Well, what's like the main muscle for the bottom of the squat? What's the main driver? Shoot, I'd be lying if I told you with 100 percent confidence. <laughs> But, I mean, I'd say the quads. Exactly. Is that right? Yes. For a natural lift, your quads are going to be the main driver. So, bigger quads. Leg yeah. press, hack squat, high bar squat, something like to that nature. Yeah, it's like single leg stuff. 
Exactly. Like I'm doing single leg split squats right now. Yep. Um, you can do front foot elevated or rear foot elevated. Doesn't really matter. Um, but yeah, if, if you can increase your quad strength, you're going to be able to squat more. Yep, especially if you're a natural lifter. You see all these guys, um, like West Side kind of thing, Kanji gets stuff. They preach, they preach the procedure chain, which does need to be preached. But as a raw lifter, you have to understand that at the bottom of your squat, it's quads. Your, your quads are what's going to be working the most. That's the one that, that's the muscle that's extended the most, and it's lengthened, so it's ready. It's got all that. Um, so you got that stretch shortening cycle ready. All that elastic energy, it's ready to shoot you back yeah. up. So that's the part you definitely need to work on. But the glutes shouldn't be ignored either, right? Absolutely, but that's more of hip extension. Yeah. Like as you as you get closer up to the squat, the more of your glutes are going to be involved. So let's say you come right out of the hole, that kind of middle portion, that's the hamstrings. Mm. And the glute working, so like a glute ham th- raise or that makes sense. It's kind of it's kind of locking out like a deadlift. Exactly. Um, I told some people this today. Like, what's the, the one thing that every single lower body exercise has? In co- every single like barbell lower body exercise has in common: hip extension, which is pushing the glute like big like snatch. We're talking about snatches, power cleans, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, and deadlift squats. They all gonna have that hip extension. So you need strong hamstrings and strong glutes because that. That's a, a majority of your squat is those is that upper portion, right? So, yeah, like uh, like I'm gonna name some some quad exercises. Um, if you want to work your glutes, um, hip airplanes are more for like mobility. Yes, yeah, mobility. Um, but deadlift. Yeah, RDLs. Deadlift is great. RDLs. If but you make sure make sure you're doing RDLs right. You can really mess yourself up sure. if you're doing them wrong. You're right. You're right. Box um, squats are good for for that. Yeah, sitting back on that box and then. Just shooting up with your glutes. Yeah. Um, let's see. Hip hip extensions or what are the glute glute bridges? Things yeah. like that. Yep. I would I wouldn't say those for like getting a big squat to do those. I would say as like a more of a warm up kind of thing. Yeah. When I start, if you need to, maybe you have one that's lagging. I'm not gonna say they're not activated because if, yeah. if they weren't activated, you wouldn't be able to squat right. or stand. That's that's <laughs> kind of one of those like little accessories that if you. If you have a problem with activating a certain muscle, yeah. glute bridges, it they're really good for helping you think about activating the glutes. Yeah, and, and it's not just like it's not just raising your hips up, but really think about using your glutes to squeeze and and push from the bottom. Yeah, getting that muscle connection to them, kind of. Yeah, and uh, letting them know that like, hey, we're about to put some poundage on, <laughs> on. And they it is it is good to have glute big big ass because that's the biggest muscle mm-hmm. on the body, so it's. It's made to lift big weight. Yeah. So, let's talk about uh, grip. Ooh, I like it. I like it. So, what kind of grip? So, let's talk about grip. What yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well. It's not just using your right hand every night. <laughs> that, was, uh, that was probably a little too far. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, grip grip can be dependent on what, you know, whether you squat high bar, low bar. Um, a lot of people do the suicide grip. Myself oh, you meant included. like grip on the? I thought you meant like training your grip. Oh no no no! Like oh, like okay. grip grip width and stuff. Okay, you had me totally confused there for a second. I do want a big grip for deadlift though. Okay, I thought you were gonna say something else. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, grip on like grip width. I got you. Yeah, got you, got you. and one thing I've been running into for and most most of the time, if you're squatting low bar, you're gonna need a closer grip. Um, hmm. A closer grip helps pull pull your back in tight. It develop it makes a better shelf for the bar to sit on. Um, closer grip being relative to the person. Right, right, right. So like if you're a giant three hundred pound dude, your closer grip is not might be might be like a wide for maybe seventy. Yeah, it's definitely relative where you can it's it needs to be something where you can actually like pull into the bar. Yeah, and and, and it's going to depend on your shoulder and elbow mil- mobility as yep. well, and even wrist mobility. Yep. Um, that's why I mean I have good elbow and shoulder mobility for squatting a closer grip but i don't have the wrist mobility because i kind of have a long forearm Mm -hmm. so i have to suicide grip it Mm -hmm. you know i don't i don't wrap my thumb around um you find that bothers your elbows any it has started to yeah that's that's one of the reasons i didn't go up higher for my top set tonight is because i was kind of feeling my elbow and you know it kind of sucks that because you know low bar that's what works for me i'm not very good at high bar Mm -hmm. um and i the closer my grip is on squat, the the better I can feel that back tightness. Mm-hmm. And so when I start to go out, I start to lose a little bit of that. Mm-hmm. But it's kind of um it's kind of a downside 
you know, I've got a, I got a squat big, but my elbow is going to hurt. And then I bench in a meet. So I've got a, that's one I got to take into consideration now yeah. is, is like keeping my elbows healthy. So what about you? Um, so I'm, I'm trying to get rid of that elbow pain. So mainly for that's a lot of stretching for me, getting that lat stretched out. I think that helps a lot, but I took my grip. I'm usually on the ring for my grip width. And so I said, what today I did, I took it out like half an inch mm-hmm. just to where my pinky was on the outside of that. And that felt a ton better. Yeah. I'm um, probably cause it was just in a different position, but even my squat felt good like that. And just having a little bit wider, I could kind of get shimmy in and pull everything and just kind of get my, like you told me at the meet, get my, um, hands straight up and down yeah try to try to imagine your your biggest knuckles where your fingers start yep try to try to point those toward the ceiling yep and i was able to do that tonight and those wrist wraps help of course mm-hmm. from a7 shout out because um, <laughs> a lot of times you know when you're you're squatting bigger weight relative to yourself you're and you're squatting low bar especially mm-hmm. your hands can start to roll back yes and, and a lot of times it really helps to be mindful to keep your wrist straight and your knuckles pointed toward the ceiling. And that can also help keep the bar up on your back and not from sliding down. I've been having a problem with that lately. It, did you know, like, okay, so golfer's elbow is like wrist um, flexion. Uh, tennis elbow is wrist extension. So I, I think it's like a little bit of tennis elbow. Uh, people, I, I hate it when people like, especially like ours, complain about tendonitis. Like, we haven't been lifting that long to have tendonitis. I'm going to be completely <laughs> honest. Like people say, like, I, have ten, I think I have tendonitis. No, you don't. You, you look like you haven't even lifted for the past like, year. So there's no way you have tendonitis. You just have weak ligaments, weak or, tendons. Or you're just, just doing something wrong. Or yeah. Don't, don't say it's tendonitis because honestly you don't know. And if it's – just figure out some way to um, make it to where – figure out how to train without making it worse or without pain at all. Yeah. And that's another thing. Like everything we've talked about um, – if it causes you pain, try to change something in that area, or yep. take take some rest off. Do a little bit of research. Change something small. Yeah, change something small. Don't don't if you <laughs> if you've got knee valgus and your knees shoot in, don't go from high bar to low bar. I, that's not that's not the first thing I would fix. What would be the first thing you fix? Well, like we said, start with the feet. Start with the feet. Okay. And and that's something that you can always do. In, oh, yeah. in a squat is whatever problem you're having try to think about and do some research and see if the problem is being caused from a lower extremity yes if that's something you can fix first yep start with the small things then work your way to the bigger thing yeah so what do you what do you think about these uh like the super heavy weights that have to grip almost the um like the, the, the inside the collar. collar yeah i think it's awesome <laughs> honestly um it works for them. I think it's pretty cool. It's a, I might try that one day. Just, I, of course, I'm not as big as they are, but I might just try to see how it feels. Um, I'm sure Flyer feels pretty good for them because some of them probably like, they're just so massive. They have such a big shoulder that they can't mm. get that narrow. Like Ray Williams is an example. Yeah. He's got yeah. massive grip. And poor mobility. <laughs> probably. <laughs> poor guy. Um, well, why am I saying poor guy? He's got the world record and everything. Basically. Yeah. Um, but, um, yeah, I've, I've tried to go out far, and I just – it doesn't work for me. Yeah, I can't create the same tightness. I don't have a Being great a wall of China back like Ray. Yeah, but over time we'll probably go wider and wider. Yeah, I'll probably have to to keep my elbows healthy. Yeah, and as, you, as your back gets bigger and we just get because we might lose. Well, I think if you keep doing a lot work, that mobility will be there because you're constantly stretching that out. Mm-hmm. Um, one thing that's cool too, like ever since I put on the wraps. I, I right when I get into the bar, I can the bar's already lifting off the thing without even me like yeah. trying to do anything because it's, it's like okay that's me in a probably in a pretty strong position right now yeah with everything stacked and when I get on the bar I just lift it up I'm like wow it feels great on my back mainly because probably my wrist is taking a little bit of mm-hmm. course more pipe than what it should be but it just comes to getting a bigger back too wow. yeah when you when you get your grip and you slide up under the bar you should feel like you're just wedged into place. Yeah, you, the bar is sometimes it just comes off without me even trying because mm-hmm. that's just how tight you get. Yeah, one and um, one thing I see a lot of is people unracking the bar with a staggered squat or a staggered stance. 
Yes. And we did this in high school, and of course, we shit on my coach again. He didn't know any better to tell us different. Yeah. Like, it it doesn't make any sense whatsoever to sports specific. <laughs> to to unrack a bar with a lot of weight on it. With one leg. Yeah, with one leg. Yeah. Like that's a great way to fall. It's a great way to trip. It's a great way to have an imbalance. Yeah. Like. Get both your feet up under you in and lift this up. about a shoulder width stance, you know, whatever feels good. And like um, Dylan helped me fix this last year. I was like, when when you get yourself wedged under and you get your feet placed, don't like swing up under and unrack it real quick. Mm-hmm. Get, give yourself a second or two to get under that bar. Yeah. Get a good brace. Stand up with it. Catch your balance. You know, be be stable. Take take intentional steps. Mm-hmm. You know, because that's you know, if you're not focused on your steps, the little things, you're gonna mess up. You're gonna get hurt. You're gonna trip. You know, take take one step, steady. Take two steps, steady. Mm-hmm. You know, three. You shouldn't need like seven steps to get set. You should need like three. <laughs> yeah, three. Like like At I'll most. I'll take three steps and then I'll adjust my feet like. Um, angle wise, you know, and then I'm ready. Like, you know, the more steps you take, the more, the more work you're doing before you even start the squat. Yeah. Um, one thing it's always like when I was uh, with the strength conditioning team here at state, and um, the, the coach, the head coach, the head strength conditioning coach at the time, who, who's now with the Buccaneers, um, he he, one, it's one thing he told me that's always wrong about you. You're stronger and with your feet under you. Like that's always just been like in the back of my head like so if I'm strong if like look at sharp and they they look they have the best deadlifts in the world they don't have sumo stances right their feet are re- relative to their, to their size pretty under underneath them like yeah. their, their hands are outside of their their knees mm-hmm. so that's always just wrong in my head you're stronger in with <laughs> with your center of gravity is right beneath you yeah and that's uh that's another thing like People that are inexperienced in bench, they they start struggling on a weight, and you'll see their feet start kicking, <laughs> yeah. kicking up. Like, that doesn't make any sense, yeah. man. But a lot of people, like, this is why we're trying to do these episodes, and we're going to continue another episode with bench and the same concept and then deadlift, like mm-hmm. common mistakes, how to fix them. Because, you know, you don't like we say, you don't know what you don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, and we want you to kind of be aware of the things you should be looking for, um, yeah. how to fix them, what to do. And like you know, we don't know everything, but you, yeah. YouTube knows a lot. Yeah, but if you're listening, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> and there, and I'm sure there's a bunch of stuff that we've missed from the squat that, yeah, you know, a veteran coach would be able to pick up on. For sure, but and these these are just like common mistakes. Yeah, yeah. But well, we're not we're we're young at this, and we're trying to help the young people. Um, maybe, but we got. I think we have some pretty good information that people can definitely use for sure. Yeah, to help you get better. Um, that people probably won't think of. Yeah, and like, like you said, we're young. We we don't know everything. We probably but we're don't learning. Yeah, we we keep learning. Um, we we know a little bit, and whatever we know, we want to share. Like that's the point. That's the point in this podcast. Yes. If, if we can keep one person from getting hurt and improving their technique, yeah, you know, help people progress. You know, on a regular basis, without getting hurt. Um, they fall in love with the sport. They, you know, changes their life. You know, whatever it does, you know, it's worth it. Yeah, so that's what the goal is for. Yep, exactly. We're just here to help people, make people better, especially ourselves. Help each other. We, just, I think, it's been fun living with with you. And be honest, um, I know you, you, we talk shit to each other sometimes because that's just fun. That's what you gotta do. Yeah, it's just that's just fun sometimes. But like, we felt each other out. It's fun, like, being able to, as a community, get together and just like start lifting and just kind of help each other out. Have a little bit of fun, and just like help each other on the different lifts, and just like learn from each other. Yeah, yeah, and we all hang out usually outside outside of lifting in school. So yeah, we have, we're a pretty tight group. Um, but yeah, we're here to help. But I, I've learned a lot from talking to you over these um, yeah. last four, five months, whatever it is. Yeah, we've been doing for a while. But yeah, I've, I've learned a lot from you too, especially about quick lifting. Yeah, and we got more to learn. Oh yeah, dude, I'm, I'm excited. <laughs> I like after this meet, I want to get to a suit before I, I leave the semester. So you got to, you should. Yeah, I will. <laughs> if if anybody out there is selling a suit for the low price, 
I'm not gonna buy a suit yet. No, 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 no. I'm just gonna try like <laughs> I'm just gonna try a suit out just to see what it's like. Your right. you'll, you'll you'll buy your suit's probably too big for me. Um, maybe Dylan's suit, maybe something like that. Well, his suit, his legs. I, I think too big for I think mine. his would probably fit you. The legs might be a little too big, but yeah. from from the uh, the crotch to shoulders length would probably be closer than mine would. Yeah, yeah. And then maybe we'll convince you to get in a bench shirt. Maybe. I mean, I do like my close group bench. It feels great. You. You can, you can work up to, you know, you can still do close grip with a shirt. Maybe just be a little but harder. But I like it like, like, close, like shorter, close. close, close, like shorter with close. Yeah. I'm like where the knurling ends. That's where I like it. Golly. Dude, it just feels like a fucking rocket. <laughs> <laughs> a rocket. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, and that's kind of what my coach, when the coach that I worked under said that, I was like, it kind of got wrong with me with bench too, like I'm mm-hmm. closer to it. Yeah, I'm stronger, closer, and same thing with like, um, like I had a guy who did martial arts for a while. He told me the same thing. Like you, when you're you're loose and, and close to your body, you have a lot more force you can move people around with. I'm like, that just that just makes sense. Yeah, part of me hopes that one day equip lifting again becomes bigger than raw lifting because mm-hmm. you know back in the day, if you listen to anything from West Side, that's equip lifting pretty much all there was. Yeah, that was the only meat. Raw lifting has really exploded in the last couple decades. It's cheaper, that's probably why. Yeah, it is cheaper. Uh, Less of a learning curve. You know, the Mm -hmm. barrier to entry is smaller. And, you know, the USAPL and IPF have really helped that along. Oh, for sure. The the raw lifting. But I'm excited to see where the new categories go. Yeah. And part of me, like, part of me hopes that it gets bigger again. And then part of me doesn't because Mm -hmm. the bigger it gets, the more people to be exposed to. And that's the more competition to have. (laughs) Dude, that's why I think records are being broken so much now because so many people are exposed to it. Mm-hmm. It becomes those people out of the woodwork that are genetically just freaks. So you think just the uh, like the population pool is? Oh yeah, for sure. More people are exposed to it. More people know about it. Same thing for like football and everything. Like every other sport, you're like you're you're constantly seeing these free guys come out, mainly because one genetics and two they're it's being uh, reached out to them more. So it's more accessible. What do you do? You think? The, I mean, that's obviously just one of the reasons. There's mm-hmm. probably a lot of reasons. Um, do you think, like, as a whole, people are getting stronger? I think so. Younger? Oh, yes, definitely. Cause, yeah. Um, like, we both, we're both over 300-pound benches. Like, it's, I mean, that's, I think that's pretty good for being just 20. Yeah, that's, that's average. We're not, we're not genetically gifted. We're right. not the most genetically gifted in people, individuals in the world, but we're not horrible either. But, yeah, Absolutely. Like I think people in like the fifties would love to have our strength now because we've learned we, we've learned from what they did and then we have kind of applied that to today's science. Yeah, and there again, there are so many ways to to do the same damn thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, people are getting smarter. Um, you know, yep. people people learn stuff and people and, can do it longer now too. We we know that you don't yeah. have to, you don't have to go in there and kill yourself every single time. So recovery methods are getting better too. Yes, and just learning how to train smarter. Like you don't have to if if you go in there and kill yourself every time, yeah, you're going to get stronger, but at what cost? Yeah, like you might be you might be able to do it for like five, ten years, but what about twenty years? What about thirty years? Yeah, I want I want to be one of those eighty year olds on Instagram. If that's even still around, it probably won't be. There'll <laughs> probably, probably be another crazy. Social probably like media. holograms. <laughs> what? It'll probably be like holograms and stuff. <laughs> I, I, I know that dude. <laughs> <laughs> You don't want to be 80, like, pulling 405 for reps. That'd be cool. Uh, that would be cool. Even, like, 315 for reps. Doing some crazy yep. muscle up at 80. If you look at, like, like look at Brian Shaw's a great example. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's a strong guy, but as he reached 40 years old, his strength is kind of is kind of get get lost by all these younger guys that are coming up. Yeah. So your, your strength kind of drops off. It. it starts dropping off around 35, so you can kind of maintain yeah. some of it. That's like the the guy that won WSM this year. Uh, was it Zadrunas Oh, Alexei no, Novikov. He's like twenty. He's the youngest guy I've ever. Yeah, won, strongest man. Yeah, super young. Yeah, and I think one thing that's helped Brian um, continue competing for so long, he takes recovery so seriously. You know, he does, yeah, and he's smart about his training. He doesn't, yeah, like if he gets the PR, he's like, I'm done, or yeah. if something doesn't feel good, he's done. Yeah, he he spends a lot of money on recovery. Yeah, a lot of time. Yep. Like going to to cryo tubs, he's got a hot and cold tub at his house. Like nutrition is always on point. Yeah, and he's got deep tissue massages and everything. So 
as a pro athlete, that's what you need. So I think, I think the same thing with like LeBron James. And look at Tom Brady. Great example. Like, dude is still killing it. Wait, let's let's check the score for this. This oh Saints, my goodness, Saints and Buccaneers, real quick. Because that, that dude's what? How old is he? I don't He's know. In this. Unpopular opinion. I don't like NFL. Wow. They're a bunch of overpaid crybabies. So it's 2020. Buccaneers versus Saints. Tom Brady is still in the game. Like, this is the playoff game. Yeah. This is it's it's insane. Like this is long it's great longevity aspect. I don't care if like if you don't like NFL, but from a longevity aspect. Right, right, right. That's very impressive. But you know another thing from that? He's a quarterback. But linemen don't make it near but, that long. No, but think he, about it. He's been doing the same motion with his hand. Throwing the ball. Yeah, it's a lot easier. The ball. It's a lot throwing easier to do recovery for a couple of joints than a full body like a lineman. You, you he, he doesn't. Point. He doesn't take near the abuse that any other player does. And he he's not as heavy, so he doesn't have as much mass to move, and he's probably a little bit healthier than a, a lineman. Yeah. Too. But I still think that's pretty impressive. Yeah. So we got we got a little off track there <laughs> at the end. Yeah, that was, uh, that, was, that, was, that, was that was fun though. Yeah. If, if you stuck around for all that, appreciate it. Uh, we thank you. We kind of ramble on a little bit, <laughs> but you know the main points are in like the first forty minutes. Yeah. So. But. Yeah, it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, kind of evaluate your squat, see what you can improve, um, write down like you know some of the basic things we talked about. Mm-hmm. If you need to fix those, um, take some of the exercises, look them up if you don't know how to do them. Yep. Um, that's more knowledge you can add to your information bank. Yep. And uh, keep improving. Or DM us. Yeah. We'd be happy to help too. We'll uh, we'll always be happy to answer questions. Um, Altman here, he has a lot of information up in that big old fat noggin. <laughs> yep, that pale white noggin, pale big <laughs> noggin. It's funny, today I, I, when I walked in the uh, place I was giving a presentation to, I was like, all right, I'm not just a big pale white guy up here just, just, just rambling on. I know something. I know a thing or two. Yeah, <laughs> just, just a thing or two. A thing or two, yeah. Not, not like three or four. Well, you got to be humble. you got to be humble. There you go. It's, it's, but uh, thank you, everybody, for listening. Uh, Alban, where can people find you this week? Uh, big strength. Well, this week. <laughs> this week. It might change next week. There we go. <laughs> might be uh, Big's little strength. <laughs> oh, man. Well, but, Stephanie's uh, big. Never mind. I, I think you can find me at Seth.Todd76. Seth.Todd76. Um, um, no, nah, shut up. <laughs> but as always, you can find the podcast at triple.b.podcast. New episodes every Monday. Um if your friend, you know, you want to send them an episode, they don't have a Spotify or Apple podcast, everything is on YouTube. Yep. YouTube is free. Go check that out. But thank you for listening. Continue to get stronger. Continue learning. And we'll see you guys next week.